This is part two. Uh, Dave Peterson, Dave, thank you for being, again, appreciate it. Great shirt, by the way, okay? Thank you. Uh, Dave was on for the first part, about a 15-minute show. Now we're going to expand it. What we'll do, we're going to review what we had. And Dave, let's remind them, born and raised where? New York. New York City? Just, uh, just outside of New York City. Oh, I have to say, oh, you had a good, if, oh, wow. If you're from New York, they say I'm upstate. Okay. But anyways, you're just outside city. of New York, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So you and Bob are both from uh, yeah, New York. Yeah. Do you claim him as a citizen? No. Or is that, no? Okay, no. I'm just checking. No, he's right. from Long Island. Went to college where? I went to college at St. Michael's in uh, northern Vermont. Okay. And now, graduated in 67. 67. Now, remind me, I forget, were you in NROTC or that? No. Yeah, they had, my freshman year was mandatory Air Force ROTC. Everybody, like Maryland, University of Maryland used to have. All yeah. right. Well, how, yeah. did, how, did the, how did the Navy get in your blood? Uh, I, was always, I was a sea explorer in high school. Okay. okay. And... You know, I'd rather do that than... Pound the ground like idiots like me. Yes, I understand. Yes. Okay, all right. <clears throat> and then you got in the Navy, went through their OCS program, I assume. Yes. Yeah, okay. And then you told me, and this is the story, this is when I really get wound up. You decided to become, I'm not going to say hard head, a hard deep, helmet deep, deep, sea, deep diver. sea diver. Okay. And the best part for me, you, it, you were trained in the Anac I still can't, Anacostia River in D.C. Well, it's, actually, it's good training because you learned to dive in zero visibility zero visibility now how long now you were you were commissioned at that point yes now how long and that's just we're reviewing how long was that school four months four months oh okay that's still a lengthy school right yeah. is it all hard helmet or is it no we we learned um, uh the mark five which is the hard helmet okay then uh scuba Double oh, hose, you did, you did the double scuba. hose scuba okay. with the Jacques Cousteau, the double hoses. Oh, really? And, so you're uh, connected? You're but, no, you weren't connected to the surface on that. But I mean, but, but to yeah, tanks. Yeah. To tanks, okay. And then we swam in the Anacostia, and you had to, you had to swim. Are you toxic? <laughs> yeah, Are you radiating? I go, I go in the dark. And then, <laughs> and then we had, uh, a, they called it the Jack Brown. It was a shallow water rig that was good for 60, 70 feet uh, surface supplied air. Okay. All right. And you practice there. And now, let me ask you this, and again, we're reviewing, what was the hardest part? I mean, to me, jumping in the Anacostia River, but for you, what was the hardest part of the school? Getting through the uh, shallow water rig. Which now explain was, that, yeah. Explain it it that. was just a, a mask that uh, would fit over your face, and you had to take that off underwater and put it back on, clear it. Uh, just like we did gas masks in the gas yeah, chambers. Yeah, and then. put it back on and clear it. Underwater, and, and, take it off. Yep. And then what? Get it back on and, and clear continue it. to no, get, all the water, get all the water out. Get the water out of it. So you can breathe. And you're doing that in the Anacostia River? No, we did that in the tank. Okay. They, had a, they had a 10 foot tank with clear water in it. Okay. So they could see whether or not you were having problems. <laughs> oh, hey, thanks a lot, guys. We're getting it. Now, going back, we'll stay with school and then we're going to leave it in a second. What time of the year was it? I mean, that, we, we started in February. That's cold in February. Yeah. So, and the first thing we did was dive out in the in the river. We had a barge that we were on. You had to climb down. A, you got suited up, climbed down 13 steps into the water. Okay. And then you had now to you come back up. You got your gear on. Yes. Okay. And you came back up. You had the the full suit, and you had uh, like mittens on. They were they were two fingers, two fingers, and a thumb. Okay. Okay. And they were they were rubber rubber leather coated uh, rubber. And as you're climbing up, the, your your hands would freeze. Freeze them because it was so cold. I mean, the water's, out. is it free? It's, I mean, it's got uh, February, you, you can had freeze. long johns on or whatever. Oh, and, so you didn't feel it as much or what? No. Nah. Oh, okay, it was no problem. What percentage of guys, and I assume it was all men at that time. Yes. What percentage made it through the school? Four months. In, no, in those days, virtually everybody did. Oh, they, oh, oh, they did. They got, you got yeah, you officers through. Especially the officers. <laughs> okay. They needed you guys, right? Yeah. Well, oh. they had, uh, yeah, they, they actually had quite a few, uh, yeah, they, they were just funneling through. Okay. Probably four classes a year. Oh, all right. Now, when I went different, a whole different thing. But if you if you messed up a certain skill, you got recycled and you did that week over. Is that what they did to get everybody through? I know they just kept no, pushing. No, they just kept kept pushing. Kept, kept pushing. Kept, yeah. <laughs> You're a brave man. It, and it's but it's changed. The school has changed a lot. It's a lot harder to get through the school now. Can women be hard? Yes. They can. Yeah. Well, they don't have the hard hat anymore. But uh, oh, so what do we do now? It's it's a, a very light uh, rig that. Uh, they came out with probably about 1985 or whatever. Okay. They call it the Mark 12. And it's easier to work with, et yeah. cetera. Okay. It's a lot lighter. 
Now let's jump which, way ahead here. So when, how quickly after finishing school did you end up in Vietnam? Was there another station before I, that? I, I, um, from school, I went to USS Grapple. It was a salvage repair ship. So it's actually, that's its job. It's a yes. repair ship. Okay. And I met that ship in uh, Da Nang. Okay, so that begins the Vietnam that, adventure. That, yes, it was. <laughs> okay, now we just started. Okay, walk us through, I assume you're there a year. Are we there for, longer? For, the, for on the ship, yeah. uh, I met the ship there. We did some salvage jobs here. We went back and forth between the Philippines and, and Vietnam okay. and then ended up in Pearl Harbor. Um, that was in, I met the ship probably in July of 68. Okay. Was transferred in 69 to Harbor Clearance Unit 1, which was in the Philippines, where I was, um, ended up being officer in charge of a Harbor Clearance uh, Team 4. Well, that's, cool. that's okay. And, that, and that's where we got into Vietnam. Okay, well, let's that's, that's concentrate on Vietnam, because all of a sudden people are going to say, Vietnam. Yeah. All types of river type, what did you do in Vietnam? I'll, put that, okay, I'll we be were, quiet. We were, our main job was uh, combat uh, marine salvage operations, okay. and we operated out of uh, a place called Vung Tau, which is at the mouth of the Mekong down in the... We're down south? Yeah. Down south um, in Vietnam. Probably about, I don't know, 60 miles from Saigon or okay. whatever, whatever okay. distance is coming down the river. Right, but, right. And then uh, we would get a phone call, and uh, I, had a, I had a team of... Uh, you were the OIC, officer in charge? Officer in charge of the team. I had a, an assistant and... Uh, two chiefs and probably about uh, 25, 30 other guys. And were you uh, uh, I was full a full lieutenant? What I was a lieutenant JG at the time. Oh, oh so, oh. Oh, two. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> and it was in country, we, we had uh, two teams every at a time, and then we had uh, support salvage craft that uh, were small salvage craft uh, that went up and down the rivers and worked with the river reinforcers or whatever. Well, let's talk about that. Let's start with a phone call. I mean, walk okay. me through, what, would, what do they say? We would get a, I would get a phone call from uh, the um, salvage officer for the Commander of Naval Forces Vietnam up in Saigon. He okay. would call up and say, uh, the pusher boat sank off of uh, a tender down in... Yeah, what's Nabe. a pusher boat? It's, it's a war, small work boat. Oh, small this, work This boat. is the okay. first job I went on. Okay, oh, okay. Right. So I said, okay, so you get some scuba gear, and three or four of my men, we, we, uh, we had to travel throughout Vietnam on our own. And, it is, and this is, there's a war going on, yes? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we, we, we had, <laughs> a war broke out we, we while you were there. We had weapons and stuff that we carried oh, with us, okay. M16s. Or okay. I carried a, a 45 sidearm and, okay. uh, and an M16. The officer's, the officer's sidearm. But yeah. I carried an M16. Too. And it was smart. Never had, never had to use it. But, oh, you didn't? Okay. Yeah, but I, I They did. jammed. I mean, they jammed. <laughs> <laughs> I never had one jam, but fired a lot of it. But we, okay. anyway... Um, we would, we would travel any way we could, either by boat, by uh, vehicle, or... Should actually go up the rivers. Yeah. Okay, okay. Or, or we took and uh, uh, went to... There was, in Vung Tau, there was an Air Force base. We'd go there and try to hop a ride somewhere. And get a flight and, into, play, yeah. into wherever we were going. The first flight we took to this uh, pushboat job was uh, on a small Air, Air Force cargo plane with a... The, you know, the back ramp comes down. Mm, yeah. yeah. They throw you out. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so you're flying along. And the next thing you know, he's flying steady, and he does one of these 90-degree <laughs> things, and I'm going, oh, shit, we're going to crash. <laughs> and oh, that was to avoid right, being shot fire, at. Yeah, sniper yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah. From, but the guys, the guys on you. my team didn't bother to tell me yeah, this. Of course not. So I'm just sitting there like, wow. The Air Force <laughs> guys aren't going to tell the Navy <laughs> well, guys. Yeah, right? but either, even my, the, my team members, some of them had been on a tour oh, previously. they knew about okay, And they knew, okay. but they didn't bother to they tell didn't me. Of course. They, you know, they were good at all. Break the guy in. Break the new Louie in, right? Of course. So we ended we ended up uh, traveling out to this to do this job, and um, we found a boat and put a put a buoy on it and everything. But uh, we couldn't get it up because the the ship that lost it, the guy wouldn't. I was only a JG. He was a, a either a full commander or a captain. He wouldn't move. Yeah, his, ranked, yeah, he wouldn't move his boat over to put it over this thing so I could lift it up. So you can, man. So we left it there. Now, the Navy sent a salvage ship in. The, the, there was always out. one or two salvage ships in the Vietnam area. And it, they sent it in and looked at it. Now, when you said you uh, you weren't hard helmet, you you were you just regular just diving scuba. gear. Now, what do you jump in the? Remember, I'm an army guy. I know nothing. You jump in the water and appraise the situation and keep talking to people. Oh, you didn't talk to anybody. You just kept looking. Oh, you, you just kept. You don't have any communications back and forth. So, oh, okay. So you just, oh, so you do it hands. How do you communicate? If, if you had visibility, here we had visibility. Okay. Uh, but if 
When we were diving in the Mekong, you didn't have you any visibility. See. No. So you jump in the water, you're appraising the situation, and then, and then decisions are made figure, what to do. Figure out what you have to do. Okay. Yeah. And above you, you've got what, a backup team? or Who's above you on the, on the we, surface? We have, well, one or two other, other divers. I okay. mean, whenever I traveled, we, we had nothing but divers when we traveled and when we went on these jobs. Oh, okay. All right. But I had, I had nine divers on my team. But, so uh, nine of you would go to the... Like no, just... This is small. Depending on the job, it was okay. a small job. You'd take a few people. Okay. Yeah. Now, did you ever come under fire while you're doing this? Or? We had... Oh, you always fire, came fire, under fire. in the area. I mean, you... Oh, okay. You know, um, but... Uh, Nobody's shooting at divers as such? No. Okay. No. So that was your first one. Yeah. And and then, take me and up some of these other, I know you were up a whole bunch of spots. And then we, then we um, actually, I spent three, three months of my life in beautiful uh, Dong Tam, uh, okay. <laughs> which was an army base, but uh, there was, they were continuously building the army base and they were dredging mud out of the, the Mekong River okay. and piping it up into the base as fill. Okay. And uh, the, this dredge sucked up a piece of unexploded ordnance and just okay. blew up in a pump room and sank. Mm. Now we're talking about a dredge that's probably about 200 feet long. So or this whatever. bomb was in, stuck it, in it the mud. Just, it was just probably a mortar shell or something okay. that, that they sucked up when they were doing it and it blew up in the mm. um, a pump house or whatever. Yeah, and it sank. Now what was your role? So what were they actually do there? We were we uh, we were su diving support for this. Uh, it became a major salvage operation okay. three months long. Oh, three, mm. and, and while we were there, they brought another dredge in, and the Viet Cong came out and mined that one and sank it. <laughs> the other and, dredge. And that one, that one we raised in a week. Okay. Uh, because we just patched the damage and put in a whole bunch of heavy, heavy duty uh, salvage pumps and uh, pumped the water out. And For us uninitiated, again, Army guys, we know nothing. Yeah. So if, if something is sunk, are the ways you get it back up or try to, re what you just talked about, kind of patch it up, repair it and get it, or, and then well, lift it up or this, what? The, the case of the second dredge, when it was sitting on, a, it sat on the bottom, obviously it sank. Now, how deep is the and water? It, well, that was the thing. You could walk on its main deck oh, okay. at low tide. Oh, okay. At high tide, it was maybe four feet above it. And, okay. and the tides in the Mekong, um, you had tides. I Significant mean, it, tides. Yeah, so, yeah. A lot of our diving we had to do with uh, slack tide. And what is that? That's when the tide changes. Okay. You know, the period between so the low tide. So it's literally slack. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. It's, because once, it's, once it starts going, you, if, you were, if you had a line going to the bottom and uh, you were going down to wherever you were going, and when the tide was running full and the current, you'd be like a flag waving in the, in the wind. You kidding me? Yeah, no, I'm serious. I mean, it's a... Uh, how, how, let me just interrupt again. <clears throat> how safe is this? I mean, for the layman to hear you talk and, and zero visibility, there's guys fighting a war, uh, the Army and Air Force, I mean, is it safe? Well, just as safe as somebody jumping out of an airplane with a parachute. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's I mean, a risk it's, you it's, take. Yeah. It's I mean, it, so to me, it was... It was a job. It was a job. It was a job. Okay. Yeah. Did you... I don't want to be gruesome. Did you ever lose people or injure no. people? No. No, we had people that, that would get hurt or whatever. But, but just uh, work, workplace in, in, types of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, now, what was the hairiest job? I mean, how many different, I mean, was it all Mekong Delta or was it tributaries? or? Well, yeah, there's a lot of tributaries right. and stuff. Now, right. I spent uh, a month out in the, the mouth of the Mekong uh, in open water because we they had uh, um, a combat communication boat, which was just a that would go out with riverine forces, and the VC had mined it, and they patched it up, and they were towing it from one of the uh, tributaries back to um, take it up the main the main base somewhere. Yeah, yeah. and it uh, sprung a leak on the door, and they were towing it, really? and sank. In about, How deep was the water there? Probably about fifty feet. Oh, wait, that's significant. I mean, this is yeah. not somebody's swimming pool. This, no, this is a this, river. This thing weighed about I don't know sixty, seventy. Yeah. Tons. How long would I mean? This is a ship. It's, it weighed about seventy tons. Oh, full of communications gear yeah, and, and all kinds. And it was of armor, had armor plating on it and everything. Oh, okay. uh, so this is a serious wartime vessel, right? It's, communications well, and they, vessel. And they they wanted this back. Uh, oh, okay. So um, we we went out and raised this thing, and we were using my lift craft for that was a World War II uh, British medium lift craft. <laughs> World was, War II British. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you say again, help me out. I've seen in TV. I mean, do you do you wrap like a when you lift it up? How do you how do you lift it up? In, in this case, we took uh, we had cables going down, one cable to the bow, and we actually made like a noose. 
Okay, and, and just wrap it around. And, 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 and uh, just shackled it back into itself. So that it did pull tight, but I didn't care. Okay. Uh, we just wanted you to get, get it, it up. up. Yeah, and then we put one at the stern, same thing. Okay. And then we we had to pull this thing up. Now, we're, we're using craft that were... World War II. World War II. Two. Now, this is 1969, 1970. Yeah. Um, 25 years old, 40s. This, this thing was steam-powered. It took... Uh, <laughs> steam-powered. Probably about, uh, I don't know. Who crewed this thing? G Americans crewing this My thing? team. Oh, your team, team had the we World War II? We lived on this thing. This was, uh, our, this was our craft that we, we operated off of. Oh, okay. That was home base for you, kind of. Like. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, the water. I had, a, I had a, a, a boiler technician because this thing was steam-powered. Mm. I knew nothing about boilers or yeah. anything else. Um, and this guy knew what he was doing. He kept it running. Hopefully. Did. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. But it would take about six, eight hours to get a full head of steam up that I could use. Just in about, to build it up. In about 30 minutes to use it. So because I, there were so many leaks in the system. Now that's why it took three months. I'm, I'm just. No, this this one oh, was uh, this one oh. was only a month to go out oh. and get the other one. The other one we had two um, World War II German heavy lift craft, and these these. How do we get a hold of this stuff? Um, or do we know? Well, we got those after the war. Okay. After World War II. Okay. They the the Navy took uh, possession of them, but even there they they um, they must have been sitting in. Dry dock somewhere, somewhere, or somewhere yeah. in a harbor. Or because they, they brought them to the Philippines. These the German craft they brought to the Philippines and uh, had to re-outfit it and all the instructions. And I think of this: Filipinos working on a German boats. Ger German, 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 German manuals. Oh, good luck. Good stuff. luck. So you know, uh, it was experience. They eventually we we used them. That was the, the job we did for three months. We used those uh, two lift craft okay. to, to raise this thing. And, you, you basically it was putting like wires underneath, a lot of wires underneath. Uh, when you say and thick cables or yeah, three yeah, inch. Okay. Oh, so it's a good three size inch, cable. You know, yeah, that's we're, a we're that's a big, cable. That's yeah. a cable. And you just made a you just made a big cradle for it, and Bring lots of wires, and you just lifted it up either by um, cinching everything up, making it all tight at low tide. Okay. And you let the tide help. Plus, you could also the lift craft. You could also ballast them down. And then when you pumped the water out, you were making a ballast okay, lift, too. Now how, and, then, and, yeah, and as you did this, you would move it into shallower water mm. and repeat the process okay. until you could supposedly get it now, would high you enough go to refloat it. Feet a day or foot a day? Coming up. What, whatever. Oh, whatever. So you would, you would actually be working with the, the tides. Okay. So you would, uh, you would try to get it at, at slack tide, low slack tide. Okay. You would take and try to... Get cinch these, everything up, right. and as you ballast down, you get it all ballast down and cinch everything up, and then as the tide started coming in, you start pumping your water out, and with the, and then these are non-self-propelled craft, so you had tugboats there to move you along. Oh, yeah. oh shallow, this is basically like a bar, a big barge, yes, yeah. you're working you on. Move, you would move into shallower water. Okay. Now, yeah. I'm interested in just being, what, what, did you work a 12-hour day, eight hour, how long would you... And what was, what no, was the day was, like? That was sunrise to sunset. Sunrise to sunset. Yeah. Now, seven about, days a week. Oh, seven days a week to do yeah. this. Okay. Now, how about living? Did you live on the barge? Did you eat on the we, barge? Or we, how that? The, the medium lift craft we had brought up there, right. and we were living on that. Actually, I mean, there were bunks and stuff, yeah. and the, a kitchen and the staff to do yeah, that. No, no air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> what was the temperature, 100? Well, and uh, no air conditioning. We had uh, our own, gen we had a generator, uh, okay. and that was our electricity. Uh, the hot water consisted of uh, the sun coming up. And Solar hot water. Yes. 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 Okay. So the first guys to get the sh get back to take the shower. <laughs> they the they, the day, they made that. Yeah. And it wasn't the officers. Oh, I'm sure it <laughs> wasn't. Now, how about cooking? How was the galley like? Was I there... had a, I had a cook uh, assigned to my team. Okay, and he um, he kept you fed and stuff. Yeah. And seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And sunrise to sunset. Yep. That's a killer job. Isn't it? Well, it's a, you know, that's... Were there break... Okay, I'm salvaging here. Is there... Yeah, when we finished when okay. we finished the job, we'd go back to Fung Tao because we operated out of Fung Tao. Okay, okay. And if it, the next job... Would, uh, You're literally waiting for the phone yeah. call for the... Yeah. Uh, what was the most... Uh, did you get any aircraft or boats only? Um, I, did, I didn't work on any aircraft, but we did We did recover aircraft. What, oh, you really did? Yeah. Like, give me an example of the aircraft recovery. Well, you, you just have a, a plane that would go down and for whatever reason, okay. in the water or okay. the swamps or whatever, right, and right. we'd go in and get them. Uh, Bodies or no? They got out. 
They, well, they get, they found bodies. Uh, oh, they did find you know, bodies. Uh, the command. This is you know other teams that were over right, there. Right. My team, we didn't get involved. In. It just didn't work out that, that you, way. But the lottery uh, didn't win. Did. Was there a special? Uh, I guess it was decorum. <clears throat> I mean, did we just keep the body. I know when the, we recovered a Russian sub. I think I read they had a special deal where you know they oh, turned them properly. These were all, these were all U.S. Uh, oh, would have okay. been U.S. people. Oh, so U.S. They, people. And the interesting thing, like on the on the aircraft. You'd, you'd bring it up and, and you'd put it on a beach somewhere and, and all, the, all they would want to see is an identification number on it. They didn't care about the wreck. They, <laughs> they just wanted, wanted to, to be able to prove that this was aircraft number whatever. Okay. Um, Were there ever aircraft or boats you just couldn't get on? I mean, is there such uh, a thing as still in the Mekong Delta? You know, yeah. You, you uh, no. Well, no. No. They, they've, uh, if it went down, we if got we, it. If we, knew, if we knew where it was, okay. uh, we would get it. Now, the, the interesting thing for what we did, we, like I told you, we traveled on our own. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, somebody had made up a pass that said to the effect that this person is on a need-to-know mission for the Commander Naval Forces Leave Vietnam. Leave him alone, leave him alone. And they have priority on flights. Oh, wow. So, you know, it, we'd give it to an enlisted guy and he'd go out and bump yes, some... Sir. some uh, Major or general or something. Yeah, off the flight. <laughs> yeah. And then and the, uh, the uh, salvage officer in Saigon knew about this and it said it had his phone number on there so if you have any questions you call, call him. him up you know and the guys would be out after curfew and the, the mp would call him up or whatever and say did they show you a card yes sir they did can you read <laughs> leave him alone a yeah. special assignment yeah. yeah i'm interested in the salvage office what rank was the salvage officer in saigon i mean is this a high priority probably a lieutenant commander oh so it was pretty high he, up the scale he had probably previous in fact the one the one person i i dealt with who i knew had Previously been a CEO of a salvage ship out of Pearl Harbor. Okay. Which is where my ship was out of. That's why I out knew of Pearl Harbor. from it. Yeah. Now, did you, did you get back? I'm, I'm still trying to do the timeline. Would you go back to the Philippines ever between? Or? We, were, we were TAD in Vietnam. And what's TAD? Temporary additional duty. Oh, like TDY. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, we were, so we were getting like per diem. A dollar oh, so ninety a dollar ninety a day oh, per diem. Man, man. We were living high You didn't spend high. it all in one place, did you? <laughs> no. Dollar a night. And, uh, no, but... Uh, <clears throat> You, if you stayed more than six months, 180 days okay. in Vietnam, it was continued to considered a tour in Vietnam. Okay. So they pulled us out. The Always the day before. Always the, the day before. The first time we were there for five uh, five months. Okay. And then uh, they pulled us out and rotated another team in. Now, uh, we okay. Were you getting combat pay and overseas pay or no? Get combat pay. You did plus, get combat plus, pay. Plus uh, dive diving pay. pay. Yeah. How much is diving pay a month? Diving pay was $110. Oh, that was not bad in those. I mean, the 60s, right? And combat right. pay was 55 Okay. Yeah. Now, you, you guys got <clears throat> all your salary that you got right. was tax-free. Yes. For oh, officers, you, it was only $500. Oh, really? Anything oh, you over $500, taxes. we had oh, to pay yeah. taxes on. Yeah, because you know, an enlisted guy, overseas pay, combat pay, and your basic pay tax-free wasn't a bad deal. You know, this no. is the 60s. It wasn't yeah. a bad deal. No. It wasn't a good deal, but it wasn't a bad deal. Oh, officers had to, I didn't realize that. Yeah. They had to do that. You know, it wasn't all plush for us. No, way. no. Now, when you, how often, I mean, the, I got R&R &R after six months. We, Were you guys getting leave on R&R? &R? When we came back from, uh, we would get a week off in, uh, in Subic Bay. And just in the, Philippines. the guys could run wild for a week. Yeah. Okay. Which is and how often was that? After every every deployment. Into oh, okay. All right. We well, almost like the Navy SEALs are now. They're deployed. Yeah. And then and bring them back yeah. and they're deployed again. And we, and we were supposed to go in for three months at a time. Oh, so but the first time it, it, we were having so much fun they kept us there for five months. <laughs> <laughs> is it Robert McNamara's special tour that many of us <laughs> yeah. went on? All right. Did you get into Saigon at all? Oh yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah. We flew into Saigon. Is that the right. office? I guess. Well, plus the fact we flew into Tonsonut. Okay, and, uh, we, most of us came in, yeah, along there, yeah. The first first time I flew in there, uh, we were relieving another team, and they were doing a job on the waterfront in, in Saigon, Saigon on All the right. Mekong River. Oh, wow. So we go down there, and I'm looking, and here's these, uh, in those days it was Braniff International. Right, yeah. Stewards is water skiing up and down the river. Oh, yeah, there's a war going on. Yeah. Hey, by the way. <laughs> and there's, there's mines going, you know, flo they flew <laughs> They didn't mines. care, yeah, they didn't no. care. I, I said, wow, this is amazing. When I had uh, a courier thing in the Trang. It was the same thing. I'm in the Trang, and I said, well, first Sergeant, well, you had 24 hours yet. He said, first Sergeant, what should I do for uh, 24 hours? He said, there's a beach down there, dummy. You go to the beach, Vietnamese and bikinis, guys, same uh, thing. Uh, I mean, it's like Ocean City East, right? But those were the last, 
um, white females I saw. Well, you did, Caucasians were not, that's right, yeah. we didn't see, right? No. People don't understand, culturally it was interesting, I mean, Vietnamese were always good to me, but it was, uh, it was different, let's just leave yeah. it that way, it was just yeah. simply different. The, so when you left, Viet, any more Vietnam stories before I keep going? Oh, you can keep going. I just, okay. I'll just interject. So, okay, good. <laughs> when you left Vietnam, did you have more time in the Navy? And you, no, in oh. fact, uh, when, uh, when I, when I uh, was getting ready to go, I had just met my future wife okay. before uh, you went I, went, I went overseas. Right. And as we were getting ready to deploy the first time, I had sent her something. Now, this is August. Of, so I sent her something, a uh, piece of jewelry. Oh, nice. And in those days, you had to put on there what it was. Right. It was a you know, little story. sticker on the yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we uh, sent it to her. And about three weeks later, four weeks later, I get a, a thing from the uh, postal inspector in they San Francisco. They confiscated it. No, it was stolen. Oh. They caught a guy stealing it. You can't. So periodically, I would write uh, a letter to the guy saying, you know, uh, that was supposed to be a Christmas gift. Yeah. It's now. Someone I love. It, and yeah. it's now January or February. And it, uh, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? So. Um, I'm back in Subic, and I'm sitting there, and I get a set of orders from the, ordering me to report to the U.S. Assistant District Attorney in San Francisco oh, for <laughs> this case. Of this, they were finally going to go, and this is like a year later. Yeah, thanks. And uh, I was due to get out in December, and this was September, so I, I went to the CIA. You're a short timer. You're, you're uh, done. So, you're I, done. And I was done in Vietnam because they weren't going to rotate me back in no, there. No, no. Uh, and I, I had spent, I guess, nine, ten months at least in Vietnam. Okay. Um, right. So, so the, I said, see, oh, you know, it makes no sense to fly all the way across to San Francisco and then fly all the way back yeah. here. Two months later, I get out. So they, they, um, they went through and they changed my uh, getting out of the service. Unless you adjusted it. Was, it, it, it yeah. was going to get out a week after. I had a must route to Treasure Island a week after this mm -hmm. trial was over. Yeah. So I, I had it uh, like two or three weeks in San Francisco. Oh, that was tough duty, right? Yeah, <laughs> San Francisco, right? I, Let me go back. Subic Bay. I, I've had a couple, I, I guess uh, you've met at the co our coffee get together with the veterans. They like Subic Bay, yes? Well, it was a it was great Liberty Port. That's what it, I mean, yes. Yeah, yeah. but it, it's not a place, you know, when you're stationed there. It's uh, not good. No, I mean, um, There'd be some times when the base was locked down because the uh, local uh, elections were going on and the way that the Philippines... Oh, this Filipinos is the market. Were, was this Marcus here? Yeah. yeah. Yes, okay. But, but if they didn't like your, your politics, they'd just throw a grenade in there. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot you. <laughs> and they, right. you know, so sometimes there was things... Uh, you know, I had some of my guys that have a car break down somewhere out off the base and they'd come back for parts, and when they come back, the car's car gone. was gone. Forever. And that fire. Yeah. I mean... So what? It, yeah. It, it was... It was just different. Okay, it was different. I've well, a couple of the was Air Force in, in the Philippines somewhere. Clark Air Force Base. Okay, that's where so Bob, that's, Bob, who you've met, uh, yeah. not Bob Bailey, uh, Bob Bailey. He said it was a wild, wild west. Well, it, and outside of every every base, there was a, a, a village. In, in our case, it was no longer Po. Yes, uh, yeah. And you know, it I, entertained the troops. We'll just leave it that way. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah. And uh, you know, I was there when uh, the town caught on fire. Old town. Yeah. The village that the GIs the, went the, to. The Alangapo, the town of Alangapo. <laughs> oh, that would have been interesting. So they, they, um, they asked for assistance from the Navy. We had, we call them jetting pumps, but it's a high pressure. Hose line. So that we, we put it on our boat. I took a team in. Uh, so we're, we're fighting the fire coming in, let's say, the front of the building. Mm -hmm. And the looters are going out the back of the building. <laughs> as, back as, as we're oh, doing thanks, this. guys. Hey, <laughs> put the hose over here. I got to get the TV. Or you, yeah. you'd get a. You'd have four guys on the, the, taking care of the hose, and the Filipino would get behind the last guy, picking his pocket or taking his watch <laughs> or whatever. It was, it was. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your service, you, right? Thank you. You just knew that. Yeah. You knew that. You're going to get beat. Yeah. You're going to get beat. Let me ask you this: Do you ever? I, I see your shirt. Do you? Are there ever reunions? Or do you ever we, get together with the guys? We started. We started doing reunions uh, mid '90s. Mid '90s. Okay. And it was originally the. I was with Harbor Clearance Unit One. And it was originally just veterans from Harbor Clearance Unit okay, 1. Okay. And then we expanded to all Navy divers. Oh, good. Okay. Um, and is that, in, is that clear? Uh, all, all Navy all divers. Of, anybody who Anybody who went to Navy diving school. Okay, had that. It could even be an Army guy. And that would there. be an inter interesting crowd. Uh, oh, yeah. When we first started doing it, we had World War II. Oh, uh, the OUDT or whatever those guys the, were called, yeah. And um, they came and 
mainly because they were they were a dying breed. They're old guys. Yeah. These are old and, guys. And they they had too few surviving to have any their reunions. own reunion. Yeah. But to, to listen to their stories, I mean, we I imagine Normandy <laughs> clearing those beaches. As oh. I assume that's what they were talking about. Or or oh. just any, anywhere, any, any Italy or anywhere. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we we did some weird stuff, but these guys, uh, and but uh, when I say we did weird stuff, we were. We were on our own as far as getting supplies and whatever. Right. So right. if we needed food, my cook would go into the army base and say, oh, we need some food. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and they're walking through like the, 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 the freezer or whatever. And they'd say, well, you can have the hamburgers over there. In the meantime, my cook is telling his assistant to take those steaks steal that, over steal there. Steal that, Because they wouldn't give us the good stuff. No. They'd just give you all the... You know, Leftovers and yeah. crap they don't want, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. So we'd have to, we'd have to take whatever we, we wanted. Okay. Um, so you just kind of survival, uh, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, most people probably don't, I mean, everyone knows the SEALs, everyone knows kind of there was the UTGT yeah. and the guys, but they don't know that obviously you have somebody in an office in Saigon, this is a major naval activity, right, salvaging with right, planes right. and boats and stuff like this. And how many people would you get, the guesstimate, were involved in Vietnam, were involved in at any one time, I mean. At any one time, yeah. my my command had uh, three hundred people at a given time. Oh yeah, three hundred. And, and we probably had a, at least a hundred, one hundred and twenty-five in country at all times. So this is a major unit, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, uh, it was a big, big command, yes. and, and there was people in that command that I, I basically never knew. Never knew because, because it was so we big. we rotated it. Okay. You know, as I'm I'm going in there, coming out, and uh, you know. When's the last time you went to one of the union, reunions, going back to this? Uh, probably about uh, four years ago. And how, how are we holding up age-wise? And you, you, World uh, War II guys are of, probably gone. Unfortunately, a lot of my team members yeah. are, are passing They're away. Just, yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's the way it works. That's the uh, way it yeah, works. Yeah. Right? It works. But, uh, it, it, those were interesting, uh, going to the, the reunions. Oh, the stories and, must be unbelievable. And, and my wife... You know, learned a lot more. Well, of course, from, you don't talk to her. She's got to hear well, from the guy. With you know, I'd be sitting the like we're sitting here, mm -hmm. and you know, tell a story. Or hey, do you remember doing this? Or you know, I, I had guys that would would go out on missions, and they would come back and say, "Well, I said, what did you do?" And I, they're working for me. Right. And I said, "Well, I can't tell you because they were on, we were on a secret they mission." Were signed or sit? You kidding me? Yeah. Lord. No. I'm, Let me ask you. We only got a couple minutes left. Was there any time when you were diving? Did you have a scary moment or, I mean, dear de near death moment? Was one time where you just said, "Lord, get me out of this." Did you have it? Not, was it? not in Vietnam. Okay, but, but where? Uh, so I, I stayed in the, I stayed in the reserves and was in the reserves oh, diving. You stayed, okay. Uh, and we were diving in the Mississippi, and taking mud out of a, a, a ship that had sunk down, and. It deep inside this wreck, you can't see anything. And you're just standing you there for an hour. You can't see anything. You're inside the actual hole of the ship. Yeah, and you're in there for an hour at a time, moving this hose around, which is sucking the mud out. Getting and, out, getting out. And uh, it goes to the surface, and they turn my air off. You had no it air. Was, it was the end. Of, it was the end of the, the last dive of the day, and there was two divers in the water. They thought they were turning the other divers' air off because he was on hey the guys, surface. Hey guys, still down here. Yeah. <laughs> now, how so critical was that? How what? I mean, was it? What, so what do you do when you don't have any air? What do well, you do? I had voice comms, so I told them we didn't have any air. Oh, so you could talk to them. Yeah. Oh, okay. It, it seemed like forever, but they probably came back on in about Kicked it back uh, on. 30 seconds. Or yeah, that might make me want to get out of the reserves. <laughs> but, hey, guys, I'll go back to Mekong Delta. <laughs> but, right? but, it, but it was you know, just something that, uh, that you're, train, you're trained. You knew to, what to do. Yeah. You knew yeah, what to so. do. Well, look at this. Stories are great. Our time's about up. Last thing. Can the young people, if they're, if they're interested in being hard helmet, do we? I know the gear is switched, but does the Navy still continue? The obviously, Navy, with diving the Navy, and salvaging. The Navy's diving school is down in uh, Panama City, Florida, a wonderful place to go to. A lot better than Anacostia, yes, though. Yes, it is. And, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they have continuously running uh, training things. Divers through uh, dive, and diving officers, they're, they're constantly uh, training okay. them. And, so it's still an important part of the Navy and, and exists? It is. And uh, the Navy. It, and, when I was in, if you were like a bosun mate, you could also be a diver. Okay. Now it's they're divers. That's their entire job in the Navy. So you can be, be an E one and be a diver. Yes. Yes. Okay. And we still have officer divers. Yes. Okay. So that's still an act. Well, if you're going to have ships, they're going to sink, unfortunately, and planes yeah. are going to crash. Yeah. Well, Dave, look at my time's up. I told you it'd be the quickest half an hour, right? We have to do another half an hour show to continue. <laughs> Thank you for your service. You're I appreciate it. 
And I want to thank everybody for watching. You've been watching Thank You for Your Service, where we interview veterans who are currently living in Queen Anne's County. My name's Fred McNeil. Thanks for watching QAC TV7. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you the next time. And to all my veterans, thank you very much. Thank you.